Okay, so we are going to look at um, glycolysis in this second video in my cellular respiration uh, like video series, I guess. And um, glycolysis, some key points about it is that glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm of all cells. And it's going to occur um, whether or not there's oxygen present. So it happens um, before fermentation, which is an anaerobic uh, process. And it also occurs before um, like aerobic respiration or like the citric acid cycle or the electron transport chain. So glycolysis is the first step, um, regardless of it, whether or not it's aerobic or anaerobic conditions. And it includes, I'm sorry, it occurs in all cells, both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, so you can think of it also as a piece of evidence for common ancestry um, to all life on Earth. Um, you could also keep in mind that when we think about cellular respiration with aerobic respiration requiring oxygen, um, glycolysis would have evolved on Earth before photosynthesis as a form of um, like a method of producing ATP for like single celled organisms um, in anaerobic conditions. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about glycolysis. So glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. Now in my slide here, I don't have all the other organelles, oops, pictured, um, but what I do have this orange thing up in the corner is going to represent our uh, mitochondria. So if this is an aerobic respiration process, then we will use the mitochondria in the second um, set of pathways. If this is anaerobic conditions, then all of the reactions will stay within the cytoplasm. Okay, so here we're starting with glucose. Um, this right here is glucose, our six carbon um, single sugar. And when we look at the first step of glycolysis, it is actually endergonic which means energy requiring. So um, each of these steps, so glycolysis is actually a series of 10 enzyme controlled reactions in this metabolic pathway. And for AP Bio, we do not need to memorize the different names of what's happening in each of these steps. We don't need to know the substrates or the products or the actual names of the enzymes. We just need to know a general overview of how it works. So here, um, our first step, as I mentioned, is endergonic, which means it's going to be energy requiring. So here we have two ATP molecules that are actually going to um, like attach some phosphates to our glucose. So at this point, oh, sorry, we can no longer call it glucose because now it's a different molecule with two phosphates being attached. So our first step is endergonic, and now from this point on, it'll be exergonic reactions. So um, also, each of these steps are catalyzed by different enzymes. So in our next step, we're going to have um, another enzyme is going to come and break this uh, molecule into two smaller molecules that each have three carbons. Um, and then we have... Um, Let's see. So uh, next step, sorry, is another enzyme will come. And I want you to think about enzymes and how they have their active sites. So this right here is that enzyme substrate complex. And right here is the active site of this chemical reaction. So this green area, green thing, is the substrate. And then the blue part is the enzyme. So when we look at, um, this is actually a really important step right here. Um, one of the things required, one of the substrates required in this reaction is NAD+. And if you recall, NAD+, is an electron carrier. So here in this active site during this reaction, um, there'll be a little bit of energy will be given up during that chemical reaction and some electrons uh, will be like gain, the NAD plus will gain some electrons and a hydrogen and will be reduced. In the process, in that chemical reaction of that happening, a phosphate will be attached to the substrate. Now, when you have just a single phosphate like this with like an I, um, that is called an inorganic phosphate. And you have millions of them in your cytoplasm. 
So I know a lot of times students ask me, where did that phosphate come from? It's kind of just there. Um, but it's probably part of the phosphorus cycle with um, like our diet and stuff. Okay, so then um, our electron carrier is reduced. And now in the next step, this on the other side, the NAD plus is also reduced, attaching a phosphate or the enzyme will attach a phosphate to our substrate. Now, I really want you to think about this. Glycolysis is a series of 10 different steps. If for some reason, let's go back to like here. If for some reason the cell was out of NAD+, could glycolysis continue? And the answer is no. Like you need NAD+, it's kind of like a limiting factor here. And so if the cell were to run out of NAD+, all of glycolysis would stop. So it's actually super important that at some point we oxidize these electron carriers so they can be reused. Okay, so um, here's just words for people who like to read. So during the energy transfer, a little bit of energy is used to attach an inorganic phosphate to the substrate. All right, so um, here, our next step, we have enzymes that are going to actually phosphorylate ADP. So um, we're going to take the phosphate off of the substrate and add it to ADP. So we're going to phosphorylate ADP um, into ATP. So as you can imagine from looking at the picture, this is going to happen four times, each time controlled by an enzyme. So at the end of glycolysis, like this is the end already, at the end of glycolysis, we end up with four ATP that were made. Now these four ATP though, when we think about like how were they made, right? Like what type of phosphorylation? Like where did these phosphates come from? Um, uh, it actually, the process of making ATP during glycolysis is called substrate level phosphorylation. And, um, but if you recall in the very beginning, we actually had to invest to ATP. So actually our net gain of ATP during glycolysis is two. So we get two ATP made by substrate level phosphorylation two reduced electron carriers, NADH, as well as um, two pyruvates that have each uh, three carbons or three carbons each. So at the end of glycolysis, two ATP, two NADH, and two pyruvates. Now, if a cell is acting anaerobically, at this point, if it's anaerobic respiration, the cell really just wants to use those two ATP as a source of energy. Um, and there's no need or no use for the pyruvate or the NADH if it's anaerobic. However, if it's aerobic respiration, then, sorry, the pyruvate and the NADH will head into the mitochondria uh, for further reactions. So that would be aerobic respiration. So in aerobic respiration, these will then head up into the mitochondria um, and if it's anaerobic respiration, um, depends on if it's a, what type of organism, but it'll either go through alcoholic fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. Okay, good job.